like to tell you a story. This is the story of Anna, and we are going to follow with her a day in her life. So in this day, Anna has spent most of the day at work. She works at a factory where they make components that are essential in the manufacture of heat pumps. And this is a very rewarding, well-paid job, and Anna very much enjoys the challenge and the opportunity to earn a fair wage for her work. Anna uh, is very happy and her city is also very happy to have this factory because it gives jobs to many people and provides significant economic benefits to the region, directly through taxes and indirectly through the many secondary jobs that are created in support of this factory. The factory has also attracted other complementary businesses and industry, and the region is starting to develop a reputation as a good place to start a business, catalyzing growth and investment in the area. So after leaving work, Anna takes a commuter train. This is an electric train that go and, and, and she goes to pick up her two children from school. They have a good day at school and they are super eager to tell their mom all the things that they learned, how much fun they had playing sports and happy, uh, having fun with their, with their friends. So now the three of them walk to their house and as they arrive to the house, Anna picks up the mail from the mailbox. So she's looking through her mail and among other things, there is a letter from her doctor confirming that her recent routine health checkup and also her mammogram are completely normal. So this is excellent news. So, you know, uh, things are going well. So they all walk into the house, the children get settled around the dining room table and start doing their homework. Of course, they turn on the lights because it is getting darker and connect their computers to their home Wi-Fi. So in the meanwhile, Anna is starting to prepare dinner. So she opens the fridge and selects all these food items that she needs to make a nutritious dinner for her family. She washes the vegetables in the kitchen faucet and she starts cooking them in the, in the cooktop. So really in no time, dinner is ready and the three of them sit to eat while they are chatting and they are commenting and they are catching up with each other. So after this pleasant dinner, the children put away the leftover food back in the fridge and they put the dishes away in the dishwasher while Anna puts a load of laundry in the washing machine. So then the three of them sit again at the dining uh, room table under the dining room lights. So the children continue with their homework and I will tell you, Anna's eldest daughter, uh, Lou, she wants to be an engineer when she grows up and she's working very, very hard and she's incredibly motivated. And at the same time, Anna on her side is also working on her own education. You know, Anna did not have a chance to get a formal education as a kid, but now that she's working at the factory, she has seen numerous opportunities to develop and to move up in the company. So, so she's excited and she's motivated and she's really investing on her own education. So the three of them continue to work uh, in the dining room table for a few more hours. Anna helps the children with their homework. They continue to chat. And then after a while, they go to bed. So Anna reads for a few minutes before she falls asleep. So that's the end of the day. And frankly, I think it was a very good day. So what do you think? What do you think about Anna's day? Uh, it sounds like a fairly ordinary day, doesn't it? I mean, does it sound like a very exciting life to you? Well, let me tell you, to me, I think that it is incredibly exciting that Anna and his family can do all that. In fact, all these very, very normal and ordinary things that Anna did today are only possible because Anna and her family and her region have access to clean, affordable 24 seven electricity. Unfortunately, unlike Anna, today there are 800 million people in the world 
many of them women and children, like Anna's family, that do not have access to this exciting life because they do not have access to energy. And the days of all these people are really quite, quite different to Anna's. They have to collect wood and perhaps animal dung to prepare a fire over which to prepare their meals. And maybe they need to walk several miles back and forth to get fresh water. Perhaps they need to secure their food daily as they don't have good means to keep it refrigerated and, and fresh. They have to wash their clothes by hand, potentially having to actually take them all the way to the water source, where there's a river or, or a lake or, or some other, some other uh, big source of water. They do not have access to sewage. And as a consequence, they are exposed to many infections and diseases. And of course, unfortunately, they do not have access to basic medical care, much less to life-saving medical procedures and treatments like Anna and her family have. Women and children in particular often have to forego uh, the opportunity to have remunerated work or uh, an education because they have to focus uh, every day on completing a bunch of menial tasks just to simply survive. And this is why energy poverty stifles social and economic development. And it is imperative that we end energy poverty as soon as possible. So my name is Sama Bilbao Leon, and I am Director General of World Nuclear Association. We are the international organization that represents the global nuclear industry. And we are truly, truly proud of connecting, shaping, and representing the industry position in key world forums, where we provide authoritative information to key stakeholders, as well as other influential organizations and the media in order to enable the nuclear industry to grow. We do all this because we know that nuclear energy offers a golden opportunity to provide abundant, affordable, 24-7 clean energy for everyone, everywhere. Nuclear energy is already and has been for more than four decades the second largest source of carbon-free electricity in the world, and it is the first one in developed nations. Nuclear energy can help decarbonize the global economy, not just electricity, at the same time that it can help lift people out of energy poverty by delivering 24-7 clean energy for all. So for us, Three is the magic number. And when it comes to creating a 24 seven carbon free clean energy system, three times current nuclear capacity is the number needed to achieve 2050 climate goals. Or rather, what we really need to do is at least tripling the global nuclear capacity that we have today by 2050. And with this, we will be able to accelerate the clean energy transition in a cost-effective and equitable manner. So this is the reason why we, World Nuclear Association, together with our partners, the home team for the COP28 uh, Climate Change Conference, ENEC. So as I said, we and ENEC, we have launched the Net Zero Nuclear Initiative. And this initiative, uh, what we want to do with it is to unite governments, the nuclear industry, and civil society in a very ambitious and pragmatic goal for three times global nuclear capacity to accelerate the clean energy transition. Okay, sounds great. So what does that mean? What does tripling nuclear uh, energy mean? How do we make sure that we have clean electrons and clean a clean molecules to improve human lives. Well, we truly know that mitigating climate change while ensuring economic and social benefits to the communities where all these nuclear power plants are provided, like in Anna's story, 
uh, especially when we integrate these nuclear power, power plants in a broader carbon-free energy system that perhaps includes renewables or hydropower or perhaps other carbon-free or low-carbon energy sources is a very good thing. So what does this look with nuclear? So probably some of you, uh, like me, have read this recent report from Nice Future. It is titled, A First Wave uh, of Case Series for the Campaign to Research the Impacts on Social Equity and Economic Empowerment. This is RISE 3. Uh, and if you have done so, you will have probably seen many great stories that explain how nuclear power can actually uh, contribute enormously uh, in many locations and, in, uh, and have an enormous impact in all areas of our lives. So for example, uh, this, this uh, report tells you about how using electricity and waste from small modular reactors combined with hydroponic greenhouse gas facilities uh, is going to allow some communities to grow fresh fruit and vegetables in a harsh climate all year round. How cool is that? Or oh, we know how we can use this technology to power remote locations such as Antarctica uh, in a way that these remote communities can increase uh, energy access and reduce energy poverty and have similar quality of life as we have uh, in, in many, many not so remote communities. Also, we can use nuclear uh, energy to repower existing core power plants. And, and this not only enormously reduces uh, local air, po air pollution and global carbon emissions, but also very importantly, ensures the livelihood of the people uh, and the investment into those local communities whose livelihood today depends on fossil fuels. Essentially, what we are doing is uh, moving to a clean uh, energy system, but not leaving these communities that depend on fossil fuels behind. So this, this work, this, uh, this uh, nice future report, in many ways has parallels with another report that we, World Nuclear Association, produced a couple of years ago, identifying the contribution uh, of nuclear energy to the 17 United Nations Sustainability uh, Goals. And we found in this report that nuclear energy and nuclear science and technology in general has a sizable contribution to all 17 UN sustainability goals. In particular, of course, nuclear energy contributes uh, essentially to sustainability goal number seven, which is clean, affordable energy. And of course, as I just explained, uh, in the story of Anna, having access to this clean, affordable energy essentially is, uh, is ideal for all other 17 uh, sustainability goals. So nuclear energy is the only technology that can deliver 24 seven carbon free energy. And when I say energy, I mean not only electricity, but also heat. And it can do that uh, independently of the weather, independently of the season and the geography, and independently of major geopolitical uh, conflicts. And it will do that with a teeny tiny uh, a small amount of land being used and a very small amount of raw materials because it is an incredibly dense source of energy. This means, of course, that the benefits of nuclear energy to the planet and to humanity are potentially huge. So for us, for me, uh, making the net zero nuclear vision a reality and uniting uh, all the industry players around the goal of tripling the global nuclear fleet for the delivery of net zero uh, is a very important goal that will require an unprecedented level of collaboration, coordination, and teamwork. And certainly, we are absolutely excited and committed to this, uh, to this task. So when we go about calling for a tripling of nuclear energy, remember that this is not just a number to avoid carbon emissions, which is certainly very important, but this also will have huge 
huge benefits for both people and the planet across all areas of our lives, from health and well-being to socioeconomic development and industrialization. And it will mean that more people in the world can live a, a, a very comfortable and perhaps boring life like Anna and like many of us do. So I want to end by thanking a Nice Future for providing a strategic communication platform for, for governments, industry, and non-for-profit partners to promote the benefits of nuclear technologies for climate change mitigation. Thank you.